From downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Working around the clock, DTE crews close to delivering on their promise to have 100% of the power restored by tonight. It's not over. Months of ugly fighting over a mosque in Sterling Heights takes a new turn. What residents are doing with hopes of keeping it from being built. But first, a day of snow comes to an end, finally, but winds pick up and temperatures drop. Glad to have you with us tonight here at 11. Snow totals range from a few inches all the way up to half a foot, uh, depending on where you live. And if you haven't had a chance to clear it, you will be clearing it as it gets windier and colder. Ben is here with his updated forecast. Many are hoping not to repeat the morning drive. Yeah, guys, it is going to be a, a lot less snowy tomorrow. We'll get to that in a second, but I wanted to show you some of these numbers. Most of us were in the three to five inch range. Ypsilanti seemed to get the most there at six inches. Couple spots uh, barely got over an inch. White Lake was one of them at 1.3. But as of right now, there is just not a whole lot out there. Four live radars coming up clean. We've got some snow, very light stuff, mainly here over the uh, border into parts of Ontario. We're going to stay mainly dry tonight and also tomorrow, but there will be some snow as we get into the second half of the day. We'll discuss that coming up. Temperatures in the morning, anywhere between 17 and 20. Wind chills will be in the same single digits. Also, let's check in with Brandon and Kim to see what they're working on for tomorrow morning. Thanks, Ben. While you're sleeping, I'll be here. Kim will be here. We're monitoring four live radar so you know exactly what to expect when you head out. That's right, and I'll be tracking traffic conditions all across town. So wake up with us for local four news today from 430 to 7 a.m. See you in the morning. All right, just a few weeks ago, a settlement over a controversial mosque brought out some raw and very intense emotion. Sterling Heights residents upset about a settlement that allows a mosque to be built. Tonight, they're launching a legal fight against the city and the mayor to keep it from happening. Mar McDonald live in Sterling Heights with a look at the, uh, uh, the chances of success on their part here. Mara? Good evening to you, Devin. That new federal lawsuit filed just this afternoon, and I had a local legal eagle who works at a silk stocking law firm take a look at this. His assessment? This is political grandstanding, and it's not going to go anywhere. Take a look. The meetings have been packed. You work with these terrorists. You were one of them. Okay, sir, you're out of order. And tempers and protests have been escalating for months. The Sterling Heights Planning Commission originally turned down a mosque at this site on 15 Mile, but a lawsuit by the American Islamic Community Center and the Justice Department brought the city into a consent agreement, which means the mosque will be built. Not so fast, according to the American Freedom Law Center. And I think what ended up happening is the Department of Justice, with Barbara McQuaid, who's no longer there, you know, the 800 pound gorilla joined in on this fight, and the city caved in because they didn't want to have to deal with the government. Muse is suing, saying the city's zoning ordinances are being violated here, among other legal maneuvers, on behalf of seven Sterling Heights residents. Muse is also claiming Mayor Michael Taylor violated the Open Meetings Act for throwing out disruptive people and those who were savaging Muslims as terrorists during the meeting. I don't think the city did anything wrong at that city council meeting. I don't think I did anything wrong. Um, so we're going to. We're going to respond to this. We're going to defend against it pretty vigorously, and uh, I hope we go after them for sanctions for filing this uh, very frivolous lawsuit. Back here live. So what's exactly wrong with this lawsuit? Well, according to legal experts, there are plenty of problems. Standing, procedural, and of course merit. But watch for the city of Sterling Heights to ask to have this dismissed in, in federal court. Uh, expect that to happen, but then again, you never know, so stand by. Let's see where it goes from here. We're live in Sterling Heights. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. We sure will. All right, Mara. Well, a Detroit police officer is suspended from his job after being arrested in Washtenaw County. Prosecutors say Officer Thomas Diaz Fernandez son, was involved in an armed robbery and that Diaz Fernandez's offer to pay the victim to drop those charges. The officer is now charged with intimidating a witness and lying to a peace officer. DTE Energy closing in on full restoration tonight, five days after the most devastating weather outage in its history. It's been quite a hill to climb. At one point, there were 800,000 customers without power. Tonight, it's fewer than 15,000. Jason Goldthorpe live in one of the last neighborhoods to get power back. That's on the city's west side. So, Jason, when did the power come back for that neighborhood? 
Uh, Karen, we've been expecting it to come back on all night. This is one of the last little spots, and unfortunately, it's not back on yet. And I want to show you why it's so frustrating. If you take a look here, this whole side of the block is dark. Over to my right, you can see why they're so frustrated. This side has had power almost the entire time of this storm. But back on this side, well, they've been without it the entire time, and DTE has been telling them it should be back on tonight by 1130. Utility trucks, some from as far away as Florida, are hustling all across Metro Detroit today, trying to help DTE get power to the last of the customers affected. Dean Carpenter is one of them. Yeah, it's annoying, but I understand it. You know, they just have so many people to attend to. He's been firing up the generator along with many of his Rosedale Park neighbors on Detroit's west side for the last few days. You don't have to run um, out. Fill up, yeah, go ahead. But before that, he and his wife had to cozy up around the fire to stay warm. That's a bit frustrating, um, especially with the cold that we've had. The first two nights we had just our fireplace. But today when he saw the utility workers on his street. Elated. <laughs> Finally. And then up on the power pole in his backyard. I want to buy him a pizza or something. <laughs> I'm sure these guys who've been working around the clock would take it. As for Dean, he's more than ready for the candlelight to again just be for the ambience. We're waiting for our neighbor's lights to come on, then we can turn our generator off and turn the main on and have power again. Back to civilization. Yeah, that'd be nice, but unfortunately the light has not come on at the neighbor's house, nor any of the houses. And to give you an idea, this block, we're talking about a dozen homes that are really an island amongst on the other side of them on just they're surrounded by people with power and i guess one of the reasons why is they say when this windstorm hit in the backyard it was so vicious that a lot of the lines were arcing and sparking so there's a little bit more damage here and they're just dealing with it as best they can hanging in there now going into day six live on the west side tonight jason colthorpe local four well jason i've got to ask how confident is dte that they'll actually have everything up and running by 11 30 because right now it is 11 08. I think they're pretty confident that this is, I don't think they're putting a time frame on it now because of the weather today, Karen, at the last yeah. update that they put out, it was, uh, they were focusing more on, you know, the weather slowed us down, but we are going to have guys working through the night as they have been. And we've seen crews all over the city today coming and going on a lot of different streets. So I think they're just working now to just get it done as quick as they can. They have put in countless hours. All right. Thank you, Jason. They did not need the snow, did they? Oh. Well, pure evil, that's how the parents of a pregnant Melvindale woman described the teen who killed her. Amanda Benton was beaten to death, her body then stuffed in the trunk of her car and set on fire. Today, 16-year-old Jeremy Lee was sentenced to at least 25 years in prison for second-degree murder. His co-defendant, 23-year-old Jacob Barnes, goes on trial in May. Still no arrests after an early morning shooting that took the life of a man in Inkster. 27-year-old was with friends in the area of Oakland and John Daly when his car broke down. Someone approached them and started shooting. Michigan State Police are investigating. The Macomb County Board of Commissioners shut down Clerk Karen Springer in her attempt to get money for an independent counsel. Springer wanted $15,000 for lawyers, mainly to fire union employees. The board voted against her 12 to 1. Springer already fired her two deputies after they filed grievances against her. She remains banned from her county computer for allowing non-county officials access. Sources tell Local 4 they think this case will end up in litigation. We're two days away from our first visit from President Trump. He'll be in Ypsilanti on Wednesday speaking at the American Center for Mobility. You can count on Local 4 and click on Detroit.com. We'll bring you live coverage of the president's visit. Uh, you perhaps know today was 313 yes. day in Detroit, and some mark the day by supporting small businesses in the city. The group Discover D1 organized an event at Sweet Potato Sensations Bakery on Detroit's west side. It was a double celebration for the bakery. Today was its 30th anniversary. <laughs> Discover D1 just launched a new website with a full small business directory. Which well, we all need to go into. It's a great idea to celebrate today. A Michigan driver's about to pay more for insurance. We already pay more than anybody. How much? Uh, the reason behind the increase and when you'll have to start paying it coming up. Crews battle a massive fireball caused by a chain reaction crash. You'll see what starts this fire and what fuels the bank. But first, one Detroit Lions off-season workout is quite a bit different from his teammates. 
I'm enjoying my time here. I, I love learning about new things and new techniques. Zach Zenner trading his football pads for a lab coat. Next with the Lions running back is researching. On the next lap. There are 40,000 square feet of office and lab space at the VA Medical Hospital in Midtown. It is the home of 69 approved active research projects and there are 33 primary researchers, but only one of them is an NFL player whose goals reach beyond the gridiron. You know him as a Lions running back. Jamie Edmonds introduces us to the Zach Zenner who wears a lab coat. Into the end zone goes Zach Zenner for a Detroit touchdown. Lions fans know Zach Zenner. The 25 year old running back who last season took over the load when Amir Abdullah and Theo Riddick got hurt. The guy who carried the offense against the Cowboys. Zenner to the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Looks like we've got a good curve. This person okay, is someone fans may not know. Well, I'm in a 100 also just to yeah. show it better. This is Zach Zenner, the medical student. Well, not yet. I wouldn't call it a day job, I guess. A uh, day hobby. After college at South Dakota State, Zenner was accepted to the Sanford School of Medicine at the University of South Dakota. Went to the combine, did all these different, you know, all the pre-NFL things. Uh, and things were looking pretty good with the Lions. We had an opportunity, so I deferred enrollment to 2016. I wanted to pursue this NFL dream that I had. The dream is real, but Zenner knows it's not forever. Is the heart beating? So for the second straight off season, Zenner is trading his Lions jersey for a lab coat. Last year, he was a student volunteer at Henry Ford Hospital. I was working with hypertension model in rats, where it's fructose-induced, salt-sensitive hypertension. So basically giving these rats uh, a lot of sugar and a lot of salt, not too different from a lot of Americans' diets and basically watching what happens to the blood pressure. This year, he's at the VA hospital in Midtown. His work, a continuation. His previous mentor, handing Zach off to Dr. Noreen Rossi. I inherited Zach, which was one of the best things that happened. <laughs> Rossi is a professor at Wayne State. She's also a renowned researcher. Dr. Rossi admits she's not a football fan. She's more of a hockey girl, but she says Zach's athletic background translates. People don't realize is that when you're working in a lab um, is that you're working in a team. For Zach, it's an exercise for his mind, staying sharp and involved in medicine while also staying in Detroit for spring activities. I'm enjoying my time here. I, I love learning about new things. So, has anyone recognized Zenner, the NFL player? A police officer who works at the VA came down and was looking for me. He's a season ticket holder, was just super pumped that I was here working at his VA. Zenner tells me he just deferred another year for medical school. He says the situation is so unique, so he'll ride the NFL wave as long as it lasts. When he does get into medicine, he says he wants to focus on surgery. One more positive, he says, of working at the VA hospital is the work directly affects veterans of this hospital and hospitals around the country. Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. Isn't that something? That is really cool. You always see these athletes in this, quote, stereotypes. Yeah, and you don't yeah. see all the things that they can really achieve uh, he's, off the field. And he's such a hard-nosed runner. It's an I interesting know. combination of things. Here's what we're look, uh, working on for tomorrow night at 11. Trendy drinks are everywhere, from coconut water to kombucha, bulletproof coffee to bone broth, and countless detox teas. Tomorrow night at 11, Dr. Frank Lee George talks to an expert about which ones are safe to sip. There's some therapeutic benefit to that. You feel a little bit better. It certainly helps with hydration. And which could be dangerous to drink. There's certainly things out there that may hurt you. The truth about trendy beverages, tomorrow night at 11. All right, well, Ben is here, and we are talking about really what we've got tonight, but also how it's going to affect us tomorrow morning, because yeah. we need to figure out how long it's going to take us to get to work. Yeah, <laughs> two commutes, pretty much toast, yeah. and let's yeah. hope that number three goes a little bit well, It was better. all stretched out, so, you know, this was uh, an all-day event, really. It was. It was little bits here and there, but it totaled up to be uh, quite a headache, especially as we get into the afternoon. But uh, the visibility has improved and skies have dried out. The winds have really not calmed down all that much. They're still about 14 miles an hour, so our air temperature 
is at 22. That gives us a wind chill right now of nine above, and we're going to see very similar numbers as we get started tomorrow. A couple flakes being reported at Metro, but you can see on the radar there is just not a whole lot left as everything has migrated to the east and boy has it. In fact, you can already start to see Tuesday's major winter storm taking shape in the mid Atlantic. It's snowing in Washington right now. The low that got us with that snow is in the process of transferring its energy out here to this uh, coastal low, and this is going to become a full fledged nor'easter. Wait till you see the numbers on this storm, but it's also going to be bringing winds. Those tightly packed isobars just bringing in the winds off of the Atlantic and to the uh, coastal areas of New England. That low will finally wrap up in the morning Morning, but man, these these snow totals are ridiculous. Almost 28 inches over two feet of snow expected in Allentown. The big cities here along the coast, uh, possibly over a foot in New York, 14.6 there, 14.8 possible in Hartford, and well, a little under a foot in Boston. Looks like you're getting off light, but still windy uh, there. As far as what we're concerned, uh, it is going to be cloudy tonight. Just a few flakes, no accumulation expected. We've got that 10 to 20 mile an hour wind, so that's going to keep wind chills pretty much right where they are. We'll look at those in your four zone forecast waking up in the morning around the metro zone. 10, 11, 12 is generally how it's going to feel to start out tomorrow. South zone, very similar numbers. Couple single digits out there in Onstead and Tecumseh. West zone, even colder, especially once you get north of Ann Arbor. Seven and Howell, Fenton, Flint, Clarkston. Same wind chill to start tomorrow. And in our north zone, could be as uh, feeling as low as four up there in Lexington, but it's all single numbers except for Macomb. You've got the big 10 for a wind chill tomorrow. High temperatures only getting up to 23. Wind chills will remain in the teens. There will be some scattered snow showers in the afternoon. A lot of that is going to be north of the city. And as far as accumulation goes, I think it's going to be less than an inch. But a, a lot of us are uh, not going to see anything at all. Temperatures slowly warming up. We'll be back above freezing on Thursday. A couple showers around for St. Patty's Day Friday, and then we're going to stay around average as we finish the week. Could be seeing more snow. Yeah. There we go again, of course. Yeah. It's March. All right, babe. Uh, new hope for breast cancer patients. The drug the doctors say can increase chances of surviving it. And a driver takes out a utility pole, but this crash was just the start of one wild chain reaction. Hey, Metro Peace. A new company will be fixing the interceptor sinkhole in Fraser. Dan's Excavating in Shelby Township won the $33 million contract replacing, uh, replacing Rickman's of Sterling Heights. It's a change that city officials believe could reduce costs, but the goal is to have construction complete now by mid-September. In Gross Point Shores, a man is okay after driving his car into Lake St. Clair. It was on Lakeshore Boulevard when he hit a patch of ice, lost control, and ended up in the lake. Coast Guard helped rescue him through the sunroof before the car sunk. The annual auto no fault insurance fee is rising to $170. That's a $10 increase. The funds pay for the care of people catastrophically injured in crashes. The hike begins July 1st. Michigan is the only state requiring drivers to buy unlimited medical benefits. New video shows the moment a truck crashed into a utility pole, sparking a massive fire outside Los Angeles. When the utility truck crashed into the pole, it caused live wires to hit the ground and they lit up everything in their path. And that, in this case, included cars and buildings. One of the buildings engulfed was a plastics recycling company inside an industrial park. You can imagine uh, that problem. No word yet on whether there were any injuries, but the crash is still being investigated. A new drug has been approved for the initial treatment of advanced breast cancer in postmenopausal women. It is called Kisqually. The pill slows the spread of cancer by blocking two proteins that can stimulate the growth of cells. One study shows that when Kisqually is paired with other breast cancer drugs, it reduces the risk of the cancer worsening by 44%. Well, first it was the 11 inch foot long at Subway. Yes. Now we've got another drama. The new fast food order people are complaining about French fries. Hundreds of angry McDonald's customers are taking to social media and they are posting pictures like this. Sort of half filled boxes of French fries. They say the large size isn't worth it since they're only filling it up to be about the equivalent of a medium size order. McDonald's hasn't yet commented on the issue, but there's social media at work. Oh, Don't those mess fries. with a McDonald's French fry. Exactly. Those are so good. <laughs> no.